All right, what's going on, everybody? My name is Joe Scorsone, channel is called Ethernet Link, and today um, I'm gonna do a really quick tutorial and explain something really quickly for you guys. So, actually, on my last um, tutorial video, someone commented and asked me to do a Mac D cross video, and so this is it. This is um, the video I'm gonna have on it. And so now you're gonna notice that it's a little bit different than the last tutorial I did. There's already a lot of code here. And the reason for that is that we're going to use the same exact logic as the last one because we always want to be invested in just trying to go with the trend of the market. So we're always going to have <clears throat> um, something in there. And we can use the same exact logic from the last program. So the only thing that we need to add now is, um, uh, let me get my reference up. The only thing we need to add now is the actual MACD indicator and our long and short conditions. So. Um, if you need to um, get this code down first, I'll like scroll and try and get it all in the same frame for you. But it is all I go through and I code it all in depth in my first tutorial video. So I'll link that in the description. I recommend you go watch it. It's about just regular EMA crosses, not MACD. But um, yeah, so here is the code, the lines of code from 1 to 36. And you can pause that. Here is, that's, this is actually the whole on data one. You can pause that, and then our buy and sell future functions. You can pause that. This is the reason it all works, pretty much. But, okay, so, now, first things first. What do we need? We need to make the MACD indicator. So, we're going to say self.macd equals, and we're going to say moving average, ex moving average conversions averages. It should um, come up for you like that. It should be... Uh, you shouldn't have to type this whole thing out. And so now, what we need to do is a fast period, a slow period, and a signal period. I'm not too sure what signal period means. I think it's like the mass of it, you know, and you don't just have the two things go sort of like the strength of it. But so we're just going to enter our values in right now. I'm going to go the default ones I found online because Quant Connect does have an example algorithm of this. I'm going to link that in the description as well. But the example ones that I found, it used 20, uh, it used 12, 26, and 9. Oops. And it also had a totally different edge. It bought and sold for a different reason. But I'm going to keep this super simple. And if you want to see what that is, I'm going to link that in the description for you. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to specify what kind of moving average we want. So we're going to say moving average type. And we can get rid of the parentheses and say dot exponential. We'll just use exponential moving averages. Cool. So make sure it's all coming up with the parentheses. And now um, let's register this indicator so that way we can specify the symbol it's for and the resolution of it. So we can say self dot register indicator. Okay, so uh, symbol. We can use our same self dot symbol to have stores our future. Indicator is self dot MACD, and we're also going to specify the resolution. So we say resolution dot daily. Just for this one, you can make that whatever you want. Play around with it. Even play around with these values a little bit. Do whatever you like. Um, this one isn't going to be perfect. Uh, I you can see I tested it a few times up here. It does work, and it actually does turn a profit from these timelines. But it uh, I would not use it in the this would be a good time to throw it in here. This video is for educational purposes only. Do not trade any of the strategies you see me code on this channel with real money. This is simply for educational purposes only and for you to learn a little bit more about algorithmic trading. So, I'm going to keep on going through here. And the first thing that we're going to specify in this on data method, besides what we already have, is we're going to make sure that we don't do anything if our MACD isn't ready yet. So, we're going to say if not self dot MACD dot is ready. If that's the case, we just want to return. Perfect, so now we have that closed off. And now, because it's actually more of a problem in this code than the other one, it actually does come up. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add um, something that that uh, closes our future position if it's about to expire, all right? And so now what that means is we're gonna say future invested. And what this variable is going to store is a list of all the futures that we hold in our portfolio if there is any futures in our portfolio. Okay, so we can specify this as a list. We can set x.key. 
uh, 4x in Excel file. Forbes folio. Excuse me. Um, if x dot, excuse me again, x dot value in investing and x dot value dot type is security type futures. Security type uh, dot future. Okay, so now if we're invested in any futures, what this will do is store it all into that object. And now just to make sure I, if I copied it wrong, actually typing it, I'm going to copy and paste it from my reference. I don't think I did it wrong, but um, there you go. That's definitely the correct code. Okay, so now we're going to say if future invested, what do we want to do? We want to check and see if the expiration is okay or not. So we're going to say if future invested, then we need another if because we're invested. Okay, now what's the status of what we're invested in? So we're going to say self.time plus time delta 1 is greater than future invested. The first one, because remember this returns a list dot id dot date so that means if the future that we're holding has one day until expiration all right we're just going to liquidate this so self dot liquidate future invested zero and we can give it a tag as well so we're going to say future to close to expiration all right, so now that we have that, all that code in there, let's focus on our actual edge. And this is gonna be super simple. We're, we're just gonna make sure that the moving average fast portion of it is um, greater than or less than the slow portion of it. And maybe in the future, I give an update about what, what you could do with the uh, signal. But in this uh, signal here, in this one, I'm not gonna get too deep into it. We're just going to go with the normal cross. I've traded with MACD before. I don't really pay attention to the magnitude level of it. I just try and engage what the trend is based off the MACD and the price action. This one doesn't have price action, you know, there's, there's no judgment in a computer. So we should give it a little bit more, but for now, we just want to learn how to use indicators and all that. Kind of so we're going to say self dot MACD, our variable dot fast. Fast is an attribute of MACD and current and dot current and dot value is an attribute of fast. You understand? So MACD is our indicator. Okay, we want the fast portion of the indicator. And we want the current value of that fast indicator. Perfect. And now we're gonna see if that is greater than the slow portion of our MACD indicator. So we can just copy that and specify slow. All right, and now the next thing we can do is copy that, paste it down there, and flip this on. And there you go. If you have all this other code in here, then you have a MACD trading algorithm. So let's build and backtest it. And while that goes, I'm going to see how long I've been recording for. I've been recording for eight, uh, nine minutes. So. I got some time to talk about something I want to talk about, which is nice. Um, all right, let's go back. So, why is it not? Okay, sometimes this happens, and whenever it does happen, the way I fix it is just by saving the file and refreshing the page. So we're still learning. <laughs> if it just goes, then this is how I fix it. Maybe it'll work for you as well. It's been taking a while for me for, for, to load them. Anyways, while well, this goes through and fix, fixes itself, and I set the back to forward again, um, I want to talk to you guys about the next tutorial that you want. Because someone commented and requested this from me. So if someone can comment again and pick which one you would like next, because I have three ideas. I have um, just a different version of an indicator. I'm fine with doing like following your bands and momentum. 
um, I don't know, whatever you guys want. It's gonna be a weird one that I have to completely learn about to make a video. So, another indicator, I can do linear regression. Um, actually, I actually have more than three. I can do another indicator, I can do like linear regression, something like that. I can do market delta, uh, some sort of non-stack based thing. And I can also just do, I can also show you guys how to use bracket orders on these. So the, uh, the idea that I had is I can teach you guys how to use rolling windows to make a, to see a break of high or low in whatever rolling window period we have. So let's say in the past 14 days, if the price breaks above that high, we can enter with these take profit and stop loss parameters. Okay, I don't know why this isn't working, but this is what the code should <laughs> look like for you. I tested it and made sure it worked. This is what it should look like. I don't know why Block NX means being um, iffy right now, but whatever. So just to reiterate, indicator, linear regression, non-stat based, or break up higher or low with a rolling window. Whichever one that you guys would enjoy the most and would find the most value in, I'll do. And if you guys don't give me anything, then I'll probably do the rolling window and bracket order one, then a linear regression, then a non stack based one. But um, yeah, and uh, you have some indicators, some, like vert, uh, not some indicators, some instances in this spirit, in this algorithm where you have wee little spikes and just like a lot of, a lot of um, more contracts than normal being in the account and that has to do with it like, liquidating for for um oh, yeah see there we go now it's now it's catching up it has to do with liquidating due to the expiration and also just has to do with it um with the differences in the account size and everything it's just it's not really an error it's just how it's working right now and of course if you want to dig deep and change it then your best bet would honestly just use limit orders and put a bracket order on it. But that could be for the next video. <laughs> and so I think that's what I'll do, unless you guys ask differently of me. Um, next video will be rolling window, break up high or low with a bracket order. And yeah, and also, um, hold on a second, I'll, I'll give you guys an update on my live algorithm with slash cl it uh i just want to i took it off the screen so that way you guys can see the code that comes up because i don't yeah it did, nothing important came up but something came up <laughs> all right so make sure you guys can see this yep okay so here it is right now uh we're down 2.12 percent it hit its four percent stop loss so it is what it is, that's okay, these things aren't 100% accurate, and um, we're in a new long trade. And so, something I actually did was I took this real, like the real bear, like the real structure of the strategy, and I added a few things to it to make it a little bit better, and I changed the stop loss to take profit parameters to just two points, not a, um, not a percentage. So, in theory, that could have led to me being in and out of a few trades before that first one would have even gotten filled in either direction so just something about it um i called it tcc because the name of this is the card counter <laughs> so yeah and it's trading cl so there's a little update on that there is a tutorial by macd there are your options about what you what uh, i should make the next tutorial on but uh you guys got two of them back to back days look at that college is getting a little bit better as we go um i'm a little peep fan and yeah, that's all. And if you came here from an Instagram story, thank you for coming here. I'm happy that that worked. But yeah, uh, my name is Joe Scorso. Channel is called Ethan and Link, and I will see you in the next one.